What's going on everybody, it's AG here. Today we're going to be previewing Kansas State going in the next season. Coming off a pretty solid year, all right, 9-4. and four. They have some pretty key pieces coming back. All right, their running back is back, DJ Giddens. They've got Avery Johnson at quarterback. He's replacing Will Howard, went with to Ohio State. But Avery Johnson got a little run last year. Reports are he looks pretty dang good. And Chris Kleiman has kind of earned the benefit of the doubt here. He wins at Kansas State. And with Texas and Oklahoma gone to the SEC, really the Big 12 is anybody's for the taking. Uh, and Kansas State's definitely going to be in that mix. I think they are the betting favorite right now. I don't know if I'd go that far. Uh, but they had a really good year last year. What we're going to do here, we're going to look at their schedule last year. We'll look at their transfer portal class they got coming in, the recruiting class they got coming in. And ultimately, we'll look at their schedule for next season. But looking at their schedule last season, pretty good wins. All right? And then not bad losses at all. You've got three-point loss to Missouri. Missouri was a really good football team. At this time, when they played them, they weren't ranked, but Missouri ended up being a top-10 team. They're going to be a playoff team this year. Uh, so that's not a bad loss by any means. Lost to Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State had an up-and-down year themselves, but made the Big 12 championships. So that's not a bad loss. Lost in overtime to Texas. If you remember, they made that nice little comeback there. Texas was a college football playoff team. Not a bad loss there. Then you've got a seven-point loss. Touchdown loss to Iowa State which Iowa State's usually pretty good, so it's not a bad loss, really. Did beat Kansas. Sorry, that was their ranked win of the year. And then beat NC State in the bowl game, but bowl games are not really going to read too much into. But they've got a lot of reason for promise this year. So let's look at the recruiting rankings. All right, recruiting-wise, they have the 56th, uh, excuse me, 57th ranked class going into the season, 65th ranked transfer portal class. Recruiting-wise, they've got a lot of three stars coming in. All right, guys are probably going to contribute – down the line, a lot of skill positions coming in. Then they've got a lot of guys that have signed their letters of intent as well. Four-star receiver, four-star lineman. Uh, so they've definitely got the building blocks here. Chris Kleiman, similar with Lance Leipold at Kansas, kind of some rumors that he was going to get a better job offer and leave in the offseason. He reportedly turned them down. So he's back at Kansas State. Rumors are for the long haul. We'll see if that's true or not. Uh, but I think he's a good fit at Kansas State. And with kind of how college football has realigned, Kansas State, could take that next step, next step, excuse me, I can't talk today, and run the Big 12, you know, going forward. It's definitely feasible. All right, then looking at the transfer portal class, I've got a quarterback coming in from UConn. That guy might could run it down the line for you once Avery Johnson uh, finally graduates. You know, I know he's pretty young still, but – or just gives you backup insurance in case something does happen. You know, like look at Kansas last year. Uh, the reason I'm talking about Kansas is that's just – that's who I just did my preview over. But – Jalen Daniels go down. They have Jason Bean come in at quarterback, and they don't miss a beat. So that's why you bring in that quarterback just for backup insurance. They bring in running back Dylan Edwards from Colorado. Now there are some rumors that he's pretty good, so that's going to give you a good two, uh, two-headed backfield where they can kind of split some reps and nobody's going to get overtired there, overworked. You get a linebacker coming in, three-star. you got a receiver it's trending up from Penn State. Uh, that should definitely help give Avery Johnson a good weapon outside. Now Avery Johnson, really good dual-threat guy. I haven't seen too much tape on him. I watched a little bit last year when he did get in uh, in some games. Now, I've seen some people rank him pretty high. Like, I've seen him in a lot of people's top tens uh, quarterback-wise. I'm not going to go that far just yet. I need to see a full season under his belt because a lot of guys will, you know, flash for a game or two. And then once they kind of get – once they get the starting quarterback role, kind of come back down to earth. So we'll see. But I think he's going to be pretty good. All right, we've got a cornerback coming in from BYU. Edge rusher coming in that's trending up. You got a safety coming in from Ball State. And then you got a four star offensive tackle coming in from North Dakota. Uh, so that'll definitely help you out. Now, I do lose some stuff in the transfer portal, in particular, Kobe Savage. That's kind of a big one. They lost to Oregon. Uh, but I think they should be fine this year. And like I said, Kleiman's kind of earned the benefit of the doubt here for me that, you know, he's going to win at Kansas State no matter what. Uh, so I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Now, can they capitalize on what he's done here and kind of take that next step now that the Big 12 is wide open. We'll see. So let's talk about their record here that I think they're going to have this season. Starting off with UT Martin, that should be an easy win. That'll put you at 1-0. Good fill-out game. Now you go to Tulane. Tulane's not going to be easy. All right, they've been one of the better G5 schools as of late. Now they have a lot of roster turnover. They've got their running back back, Makai Hughes. But their head coach is gone. All right, Willie Fritz went to Houston now, they bring in John Summerall from Troy, which he's done really good at Troy as well. Uh, they bring in a quarterback, which was Oregon's backup. I can't remember. Ty Thompson, I think is his name. Uh, but I think even being at Tulane, uh, first off, that's a little risky. Scheduling an away game at a G5 school that's actually pretty good. 
I really never, I don't ever understand why schools do this. Like, I realize it's good for us, the fans, but it's a no, it's not a win, it's not a win win scenario. It's a lose lose. If you beat them, you should beat them. If you lose to them, well, what the heck are you doing? Uh, but I guess you can avoid paying them this way. But, anyways, I think Kansas State beats them, though, regardless. Sorry, that'll put you at 2 0, but that's not going to be an easy game by any means. That game's going to be tough. Probably, in my opinion, their third or fourth toughest game of the year, but I think they beat Tulane. All right, next you host Arizona. Arizona's going to be pretty good. They bring back some key pieces from that top 25 team last year. No Fafita, uh, McMillan, at receiver. But Arizona did lose their head coach, Jeb Fish, to Washington. So I'm a little questionable on how their fit's going to be. I think Kansas State beats them in their, you know, kind of welcome home to the Big 12. That'll put you at 3-0. Next you go to BYU. They should be BYU. BYU's going to be down 4-0. Next, you got Oklahoma State. Lost to Oklahoma State last year. Oklahoma State kind of has everybody coming back from last year. I think Oklahoma State's the favorite in the Big 12 right now, and a lot of people, like I said, the betting favorite, I think, is Kansas State. But I think Oklahoma State's going to get them here. That'll put you at 4-1. and one. Now, that game's definitely winnable. Just because I have them losing it doesn't mean they can't win it. Oklahoma State lost to South Alabama by like 30 points last year. They're really up and down. So definitely winnable. But as of right now, I'm going to give it to Oklahoma State, so that'll put you at 4-1. and one. All right, so next you go into your bye week. All right, at four and one, then you've got Colorado. All right, Colorado, Dion, Shadur, Travis Hunter, they're going to be Colorado. That puts you at five and one. All right, at West Virginia. Okay, that's a tough stretch right there. You go to Colorado, then you go to West Virginia. West Virginia is going to be pretty good this season. Uh, that's not an easy win. Easy win by any means. All right, Garrett Green is back at quarterback. Really good dual threat guy there. I think West Virginia is actually going to dip them here. That'll put you at five and two, but again, that's a winnable game that they definitely could win. They might should win that one, uh, but give me uh, West Virginia there. That'll put you at five and two. Next, you host Kansas. Sorry, Kansas is going to be really good too as well. Uh, so that one's not going to be easy by any means. But I think they can beat Kansas. That'll put you at six and two. Next, you go to Houston. Houston pretty down their sales. That'll put you at seven and two. All right, bye week. Then the home stretch. Arizona State. That's an easy win. Eight and three. Eight and two. Excuse me. Cincinnati, that's an easy one. That'll put you at 9-2. and two. All right, then you've got the last game of the season at Iowa State. Now, with the Big 12, there's so many teams I think are going to beat each other. This might be like a Big 12 championship game to where you have to win this to make it. Uh, as of right now, I've got them at 9-2. and two. Iowa State dipped them last year, and Iowa State's going to be another team that's kind of right in the thick of things, I think, for the Big 12 championship. I'm going to take Iowa State here, but this is another one that they could easily win this game. And they're going to probably be favored in it. But I think Iowa State wins this one. That'll put you at 9-3. and three. Probably missing out on the Big 12 championship, but it's definitely possible. But again, all three of those games, Oklahoma State, West Virginia, Iowa State, are all winnable. No reason Kansas State can't go undefeated and make the Big 12 championship and then make the college football playoff. And with the expanded playoff, even if you lose a game, you're probably still going to sneak in somehow to the 12-team playoff. But I've got them at 9-3, and three, but definitely... Can see them doing better than that. Probably not worse. The only other game that I didn't have them losing, I could see them losing, was probably Kansas, uh, as well as maybe Tulane. But I don't think they lose those. But nine and three. What do you think of Kansas going the next season? What do you think their record's going to be? What do you think of them? What do you think of Avery Johnson? Is he's going to be? Is he going to be better than Will Howard? Let me know. Comment down below. Make sure to like this video, and most importantly, subscribe.